गुड आफ्टरनून स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज अवर थर्ड लेक्चर राइट इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर आई विल आई वॉज टीच यू दी सिम्टम्स ऑफ द प्लान डिसीज राइट एंड इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल सी द प्लान एंड पैथोजन रिलेशनशिप एंड अ प्रूफ ऑफ द पैथोजेनिसिटी राइट सो इन फर्स्ट पॉइंट प्लान एंड पैथोजन रिलेशनशिप्स प्लांट एंड पैथोजन लाइक बैक्टीरिया फंजाई माइक्रोप्लाजमस नेमेटोड्स रिक्सिया लाइक बैक्टीरिया स्पायरोप्लाजमस वायरसेस एंड वायरोइड कोज वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ द डिसीज बाय द एस्टेब्लिशिंग अ क्लोज रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द होस्ट प्लांट वी ऑलरेडी नो दैट द प्लांट एंड पैथोजन प्लांट डिसीज इज अकर बाय द प्लांट होस्ट एंड द पैथोजन रिलेशनशिप राइट द पैथोजन लाइक एनी बैक्टीरिया फंजाई माइकोप्लाजमस नेमेटोसिक्सिया स्पायरोप्लाजमस वायरसिस एनी एनी पैथोजन व्हिच इज क्लोजली रिलेटेड टू द और क्लोजली रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द प्लांट इट कोज द plant disease right plant pathogens weaken or a uh, destroys cells and tissues reducing or uh, eliminating the ability to perform their normal physiological functions and results in disease symptoms and reduced plant growth or death when the plant and pathogens uh, is uh, attached with each other uh, they are in a relationship the plant pathogens uh, does weaken the, or the destroy the cell or a tissues and uh, reducing to ability to perform the physiological function of the host plant and at last the reduce the plant growth and in a extreme state the plant is death right pathogens may infect various part of plants parts like a root leaves xylem vessels roots reproductive structures etc pathogen can infect the any part of the plant right plant having the various uh, various parts in each parts the pathogen infect and the give the different different symptoms is right okay now we will see the action of the pathogen on plant in this figure we will see the spores which is infect the host plant and then mycelium is enter into the plant cell walls right and then after it causes the disease now the action of the pathogen on a plant parts are as follows different different we we will see the different different uh, pathogens the different different parts effect right so the action of the pathogen on the part parts of the plant a pathogen infects the root as occur in root rot it interferes the with absorption of a water and nutrient from the soil we all know the function of the root which is helps to give the absorbs the water and the nutrients from the soil for the growth of the plant when the pathogen infects the root the root cannot uh, does it's a physical uh, is physiological functions and it, it causes the root rots because it interferes the absorption of the water and the nutrient from the soil right next when a pathogen infects the xylem vessels as occur in a vascular wilt and certain canker interferes with the translocation of water and minerals to the crown of the plant right crown means the above the ground right so when the pathogen uh, we all know the function of the xylem vessels when infect the pathogen the xylem vessels uh, xylem vessels cannot occur its a regular functions which is the translocation of the water and minerals to the crown of the plant right so it causes the vascular wilts and the certain cankers when a pathogen infects a foliage as occurs in a leaf spot blights and the mosaics interferes with the photosynthesis right so we all know the foliage it is the small 
leaf like structure which is the uh, behind the leaf or a uh, starting from the stem right so it occurs the uh, it occurs the photosynthesis activity and the interferes when the pathogen infect the foliage uh, foliage so it interferes with the photosynthetic activity and uh, it causes the leaf spots and the blights and mosaic disease right next is the a pathogen is uh, interfere infects the cortex as occurs in a cortical canker a uh, viral infections of a uh, phylum interferes with the downward translocation of a uh, photosynthetic product we all know the cortex is a uh, works for the translocation of the photosynthetic product rounds were the downwards means the upside to the roots right okay so when the uh, pathogen infects the cortex region or cortex tissues it causes the cortical canker and the viral infection of the phylum so it interferes the functions of the translocation of the photosynthetic uh, products to the downwards from the leaf to the roots a pathogen infects the reproductive structures as occur in a bacterial and fungal blights and a microbial infection of a flower interferes with the reproduction when the pathogen infects the reproductive system of the or reproductive structure of the plant it uh, causes the bacterial and the fungal blight and a microbial infection of the flowers which is interferes the reproduction right the plant reproductions next is the a plant but a pathogen infects the fruit as occur in a fruit rots interfere with the reproduction and storage of a reserve food for the new plant when the fruit when pathogen is infect the fruit it causes the fruit rot right and interfere with the reproduction and the storage of a reserve food for the new plant we all know the fruit having the seeds so it is the reserve source of the new plant right okay infected plants can develop a variety of morphological abnormality plant that penetrate the plants direct sorry pathogen that penetrate the plants directly often elicits a morphological response from the plant that may results in the formation of the aspicens or a gum layer when pathogen penetrate the plants directly they it cause the morphological it alix or effect the morphological response from the plant and that may result the formation of the aspicens or a gum layer infection right okay the cell wall the cell walls of the infected plant tissues are uh, modified resulting in the swelling or uh, other distortions of the cell due to the production of enzymes by the microorganisms that degrade the cell wall components and may disrupt the cell permeability leading to leakage and the death of the plant cells when the plant cell wall is infected the plant tissue are the modified and the cell wall is slightly swelled right or other distortions also occur by the production of the enzymes and by the microorganism the, the enzymes degrade the cell wall components and it disrupt the cell permeability and by the perme uh, the disrupt the permeability of the plant cell wall it's leading to the leakage and the death of the plant cells now the next point hope you are understand all the topics right now the next point is the proof of pathogenicity pathogenicity what is pathogenicity we all know the having the characteristics to cause the disease it is known as the pathogenicity how is a particular microorganism proven to be the use of a plant disease cause of the plant disease right how the particular organisms or the microorganisms which is prove 
हाउ टू कोज द प्लांट डिसीज अ जर्मन माइक्रोबायोलॉजिस्ट रॉबर्ट कोच इन्वेस्टिगेटेड द डिसीज इन एनिमल एंड पीपल फॉर्म्युलेटेड अ सीरीज ऑफ क्राइटेरिया टू प्रूव दैट अ पर्टिक्युलर ऑर्गेनिजम्स इज अ कोज ऑफ अ सर्टेन डिसीज जर्मन माइक्रो वी ऑल नो अबाउट द कॉज पोस्टुलेट्स राइट जर्मन माइक्रोबायोलॉजी रॉबर्ट कोस्ट विच इन्वेस्टिगेट द डिसीज इन अ एनिमल एंड पीपल फॉर्म्युलेटेड अ सीरीज ऑफ अ क्राइटेरिया टू प्रूव दैट अ पर्टिक्युलर ऑर्गेनिजम्स इज अ कोज ऑफ अ सर्टेन डिसीज एंड इट्स कॉमनली नोन एज अ कोस पॉस्युलेट्स एंड इट्स ऑल्सो यूज टू प्रूव एनी ऑर्गेनिजम्स इज कोज बाय अ प्लांट डिसीज ओके सो वी ऑल नो फॉर द प्रूफ ऑफ द पैथोजेनिसिटी वी आर ऑल द स्टडीड अबाउट द कॉस पॉस्युलेट्स विच इज यूज टू प्रूव एनी ऑर्गेनिजम्स इज कोज ऑफ ए प्लांट डिसीज वी ऑल नो अबाउट द कॉस पॉस्युलेट राइट द रॉबर्ट कोच इज आइसोलेट्स द pathogens are isolated the culture from the disease plants and it's inoculated into the healthy plant by the rubbing the leaf okay and then after uh, after some times of the inoculations we will see the same symptoms of the diseased plant after that we prove that the these organisms cause the disease same disease in the healthy plant okay so the it is the essential now we study the essential rules for the proof of pathogenicity in that case the suspected organisms must be found in every observed case of the disease so when we saw the plant disease or a different different plant having the disease so suspected organisms must be found in every observed case is the same right it must be isolated and uh, grown in a pure culture on a various media for the establishment of its identity then after suspected organisms which is isolated from the diseased or a uh, symptoms plant then after its grow in a pure culture in a different different various medias for the identification of the bacteria or uh, organisms healthy plant must be inoculated from pure culture when the pure culture is isolated and grow then we use this pure culture in inoculated into the healthy plant then after after incubation the typical symptoms of the disease must be developed in inoculated plant after that the incubation period or after some time of the inoculation the typical symptoms observed of the disease it is developed into the inoculated plant which is same as the culture collected from the diseased plant right then after we then after we concluded that the proof of the pathogenicity now the organism must be isolated from the plant part showing same symptoms and uh, again grow in a pure culture until it is proven to be the same as that originally isolated and used in the inoculation again this practical is repeat and then after we will concluded that these organisms is uh, prove that the pathogenic its pathogenicity at last coach postulates are still followed as closely as possible in a proving an agent is the cause of a disease coach postulate also used for the possible proving any agent which is cause the disease now next point is the transmission of a plant viruses plant cells are uh, protected by the cell wall so plant viruses having a uh, obstructions come when they trying to establish themselves in a host means the uh, plant cells having a protective wall or a protective cell wall so any kind of the pathogen or any kind of the outer agents which is enter into the plant cells it's having a uh, obstructions 
to entering into the cell wall like a tmv virus transmitted by the mechanically some plant viruses are transmitted through contaminated seeds tubers or a pollen nematodes can transmit viruses while feeding on roots most important agents are insects that feed on plants particularly shucking insects such as the aphids and the leaf hopper they are most uh, shucking insects which is used in the insect transmissions example for the wound tumors virus can multiply in a leaf hopper tissues before reaching the salivary glands and uh, being inoculated into the plant that uses both insects and the plants as a host means the viruses can reproduce into the leaf hopper leaf hoppers insects and then after it's inoculated into the plants like right? so the both uh, the leaf hopper or uh, insects and the plants are used as the host plant viruses are transmitted in a different ways uh, like a sap or a mechanical transmission vegetative transmission graft transmission dodar transmission pollen and uh, seed transmission nematode transmission fungal transmission and insect transmission right so <coughs> we will see the one by one sap or the mechanical transmissions in a mechanical transmissions occurs when the infected plants come in contact with the healthy plants or the leaves rubs mechanically means any kind of the injury occurs in the leaf or the rubbing of the leaves then after the plant virus is is infected into the healthy plants occur by a wind and the action of the animal and human when the plant leaves is ruptured by any kind of the physical activity then after wind or a animal or human touch this uh, touch these leaves and uh, pathogens can infect the or uh, attach with the leaf right then after the infection is caused in the process rubbing of leaves and other parts of infected plants get uh, broken leading to the liberation of virus into the damaged cell to healthy plant right so it means the infected plants gets broken and the liberation when the process of the rubbing of leaves or and other parts is infected by the liberations of the viruses into the damaged cells to the healthy plant okay next is the vegetative transmission here we will see the figure of the mechanical transmission the diseased plant is uh, contact with the healthy plant so the healthy plants now is uh, again diseased by the virus it is called the mechanical transmissions next is the vegetative transmission in a vegetative transmission virus may be present in all the organs of the plant therefore parts cutting tubers bulb combs rhizomes used for the propagations will carry the virus and transmit it transmission of viruses may also occur through the natural root graft of a adjacent plant any grafting occur into the plant parts and then after the virus can enter into this grafting parts in this figure we will see the root grafting in a root grafting we will cut the roots or a graft onto the onto the roots then after the grafting occurs and the virus is enter so we will see the this is is or a transmission of the virus is occur by the vegetative transmission then after the graft transmissions in a graft transmission many horticulture plants are uh, multiplied through the grafting the section from the selected plants on a root stock of another rooted plant any of these two are uh, infected by a virus it will enter into the healthy portion first draft transmissions occurs in that of the tulip color breaking 
virologists use this method for the research purpose first the drafting means uh, uh, any two plants or a uh, two plants are attached with the drafting and the other infected viruses is uh, transmit from the disease plant to the healthy plant first draft transmissions is occur into the tulip color breaking that is the tulip plants virologist use this method for the research purpose next is the dodar transmission in dodar transmission the cuscuta are the leafless stem winds parasitic plants plant viruses are transmitted through the bridge between the two plants by the dodar viruses pass through the connecting stem of a dodar between the plants two plants are connected by the dodar dodar means the leafless stem winds parasitic plant it is a parasitic plants which is a, which is a grow on the other another healthy plants the two plants is connected by the dodar and the plant viruses is transmit from this dodar plant right next is the pollen and the seed transmission majority of viruses infections are a systemic in a plant only far reach pollen and seeds it is a structural barrier for the connective tissue to prove one viruses to reach the floral parts many viruses present on the seed coat may not resist the desiccations when seeds get die viruses of legumes cucurbit tobacco rattles and tomato ring spots are seed transmitted diseases we all know the tobacco mosaic disease is also from the seed transmission so when the uh, virus is is uh, attached on the seed coat and uh, the seed coat is now the grow right or uh, planted then after the uh, seed are not treated the seed is uh, transmitted the pathogens from the another plants okay bean mosaic virus was the first reported as a seed transmitted viruses rate of the transmission is low but the survival during the storage and from one season to the another seasons more than 110 viruses are a seed transmitted viruses example that is the bean common mosaic barley strip mosaic soybean mosaic cucumber mosaics are the seed transmitted diseases we will see in this figure the seed transmissions how occurs okay now the next is the nematode transmissions fan leaf viruses of the grapes transmitted by the zipinem ximinema uh, diversicacutatum was uh, first reported the nematode transmissions nematode feed on the root of the plants most of the nematodes vectors belong to the genera zipinema longidurus trichodurus and the paratrichodurus there is virus vector specificity means the virus some viruses uh, as a specific uh, nematode transmitted right that means the polyhedral viruses that is nepo viruses are transmitted by the longidurus and the zipinema while the tubular viruses that is the nepo viruses are transmitted by the trichodurus and the paratrichodurus right okay so the nematodes have a very short acquisition feeding periods and once acquired the virus remain in ineffective for the long time in a nematodes the virus is a, is a small short feeding periods and once they acquire the virus remains is ineffective for the long period of time and when it's a favorable conditions is occur the virus remain again the infect the disease okay so next is the fungal transmissions many soil fungi parasitizing parasitizing the plant roots are known to transmit the plant viruses right 
many fungi are belong to the plants or uh, grow on to the plant roots and th- transmit the plant vi- uh, pa- plant viruses fungal vectors belonging to the uh, tracheids and the plasmodium mor- for forals are the polymyxa graminis and the spongospora subterrana fungal pathogens are uh, endoparasites of a uh, crop plant acquires virus from the infected plants and transmit to the healthy plants through the zoospores we already see the figures when the fungal pathogens which is enter into the host plant right Vi- uh, variolous resting spores may persist in a soil for months and the year we will see the figure of the uh, symptoms for the fungal transmissions next is the insect transmission in insect transmissions the microorganisms and the microorganisms and the other insects which is insect is a collective or collect or uh, in contact with the microorganisms and enter into the or uh, which is uh, now place onto the plants and transmit the viruses we all know the uh, all study about the uh, leaf hopper right and the, it is the main insect aphid and the leaf hopper which is transmit the viruses to one plant to the another plants okay in next while uh, white flies leaf hopper trips battles and bugs it is a virus vector specificity tomato ring spot is transmitted by the nematode thrips and the mites we all know the insect transmissions right so in this figure we will see the insect transmission in a tomato ring spot okay now we will see uh, now we will so the another points in our next session okay hope you all are the understand the lectures good day